Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing this morning? Well, I've been surveying the damage of yesterday's storm, and to be frank with you, I took on quite a lot of damage yesterday. That rainstorm probably only lasted about five minutes, but I have a lot of damage to my dahlias, mahogany splendor, hibiscus, and some other things over in the garden that have just fallen over, to be frank with you. Even things that I had staked up, things that I thought I had staked up really well, cracked kind of at that last tie off point. But, you know, I want to remain thankful this time of year. I think it's really easy, you know, this time of year. I'm hot, I'm sweating, I still need to be working, flipping beds, doing successions, and it's easy to want to just kind of throw in the towel. And I think I need to just remind myself of that feeling I had seven years ago when we walked through this property. It was a snowy day, so the garden was dormant, but we saw these fruit trees everywhere and we saw the possibility of purchasing half an acre, which is something that in this area we thought we would never ever be able to do that in this area. It's so expensive. But I saw those fruit trees. I saw a house that was unlivable. My husband and I both looked at each other and we said, yeah, we'll take it. <laughs> and you know, the gardens that you see here that I'm attempting to create, none of them were here when we moved in. And I think it's just important to remain thankful no matter what the situation, when you wanna give up because it's still so hot, you still need to be out there working, sowing flowers, cutting flowers, selling flowers. You know, I think thankfulness can be what saves us sometimes. So what I'm gonna to do today is just a harvest. Some things are gonna have fallen over. We'll harvest those, we'll set up the stand. There's apples that need harvested, peppers need harvested. Maybe get around to a little bit of baking. So friends, let's just get right on after this day. Oh, I see right ahead even more things that have fallen over there in the distance. So that dahlia fell down and now it's getting a little bit of a shower there. Oh my goodness, friends, check this out. I came back here to get some ironweed and I see we have a bitter melon ready for harvest. Isn't that awesome? Oh, I'm so excited to go inside and cut this open. I have never eaten one of these before. Well, what do you say we trade in this harvest bucket for a basket and get some peppers picked? I am so excited for this bitter melon. I'm gonna have to review all my Instagram messages because I know a lot of you guys sent me some recipes that you like using bitter melon. I'm just excited to cut into it and see what it looks like. It almost looked like jelly beans in the picture. And man, I thought I had lost it. I thought I planted it out too soon. I'm so thankful it worked out at the end of the day. So while we're waiting for those flowers to condition, I wanna try this apple muffin recipe I saw online. So I'm gonna pick just maybe about 10 or 12 apples to do the trick. And we can see how these turn out. I think I'm gonna to have to climb the tree for some of these. I think I'll pick some beans for Grace while I'm out here. For my parents' dog, Levi, because they both like green beans. Well, despite the storm, there's still a lot to be thankful for out here in the garden. I'm so excited to cut into this bitter melon and see what's inside. We'll go ahead and make some apple crumb muffins together. We'll get these flowers conditioned so that we can set up the stand this evening. So I'll see you inside. So I have no idea if I harvested this bitter melon at the right time or not, because it's the first time I've ever grown it. So let's just cut in and, oh, I think I might have harvested it too early. Oh, darn. So in the pictures that I saw, it had kind of an orange center 
and it just kind of looked like jelly with jelly beans inside. So I'm guessing I harvested this too early. So if you've grown bitter melon before, could you give me some harvesting tips on when to know it's ready? Cause I thought it was ready looking at the outside, but this inside doesn't look right to me. So the recipe calls for one and a half cups of peeled and chopped apples. And it says one and a half inch chunks. Do you have a certain kind of apple peeler that you like? We used to have one that connected to our counter, but I'm afraid that when we moved, it might have got donated. And then of course now I have all these apple trees. I could probably really utilize that kind of a peeler now. So we can make the batter now. I've got a half a cup of butter, one stick, softened in my pan here. I only own one mixing bowl and I already used that for the crumb topping. So I'm just using a saucepan. Sorry, that's probably a little bit weird. But to this, I'm gonna add a half a cup of brown sugar, a fourth a cup of granulated sugar, and then I'm gonna blend that all up. Now we need a half a cup of yogurt, two eggs at room temperature, and two teaspoons of vanilla extract. It looks a little curdled, but the recipe even says in the notes that that's okay. So we'll go in now with one teaspoon of cinnamon, one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of baking powder, and one and three fourths a cup of flour. Chris, you want to lick a beaters? Go ahead. Can you carry both? You want this one instead? Go ahead, take it to your spot. Take it to your spot. Come back for the other one later. And our last step is to fold in one and a half cups of those chopped apples. Now we'll top this off with the crumb topping I made last night, which is a third a cup of brown sugar, a tablespoon of regular sugar, one teaspoon of cinnamon, a fourth a cup of butter melted, and two thirds of flour. So now we'll bake it for five minutes at 425, then we'll turn the oven down to 350 and bake it for an additional 15 to 18 minutes. So friends, I have the stand all set up. While I was setting up, I put on Instagram if I harvested this right and how you eat it. And I talked to a couple of you guys who said to just scoop the seeds out, that it looked good first of all, and then I should scoop the seeds out and then I should stir fry it up and eat it like that. So since I've never had this before, I'm gonna go ahead and try it raw. I'm not sure if that's a good or bad idea but then I'll at least kind of know what it tastes like if anyone ever asks me what it tastes like raw. So here goes nothing, friends. I'm a little bit scared. Okay, I wouldn't recommend eating it like that. 
does this taste like? It tastes like a very bitter weed. If I was going to go out into my garden and eat a ginormous weed and the weed itself would be bitter, that's kind of what this tastes like. So I'll need to try this cooked for sure, but I'm just glad I grew one finally. I've never grown this before and it was super fun and it's so beautiful, but yeah. I think I definitely have to find a way to cook this and eat it instead of eating it raw. So friends, I think I'm gonna wrap up the video here. I wanna wish you all a wonderful day out there in your gardens and I hope to see you sometime soon. Bye.